This is an issue that exists for so many businesses. Putting extra effort and time into hiring, even when you're super busy, is not only a very smart financial thing to do, because you're going to save yourself tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on how many people you hire each year, but it has such an impact on your morale. As that saying says, one bad fruit spoils the cart. You do not want to hire the wrong people. And we want to, in this podcast, talk a bit about what are some of the things that you can do that are really, really practical. Welcome to Grow Your Business podcast. I'm Shivani Gupta and I'm your host. Today, I'm going to be taking you through how to find, incentivize and keep and retain our really great passionate people. So this is, a, this is an issue that exists for so many businesses. In fact, when I interviewed over 100 people in alignment with when I wanted to, to publish my book called Getting Your People to Step Up, which is now available with Amazon, um, one of the questions I asked was, what was your biggest challenge? Most of them said people. So it's so important to recruit, but we also want to incentivize passionate people because we all know what the cost is to us when we get the wrong person in the business. One of the things that happens is that they sell themselves to us. They appear amazing. We go, wow. And the analogy I use, and it is an analogy, that it's like you go on a few dates and it's fantastic. And then the person moves in and you're like, oh, my goodness. This is what happens when you've got the wrong people in your team as well. So as a business leader and owner, it's really important that you realize that the import, the responsibility of that sits with you. Even if it's some of your managers are doing the hiring process, that means that often you haven't got the right training in place for your managers or enough the right systems in place. But at the end of the day, making sure that we can get past what people want to tell us in an interview and it's really important that the buck stops with you and we do everything we can to do that. Putting extra effort and time into hiring, even when you're super busy, is not only a very smart financial thing to do because you're going to save yourself tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on how many people you hire each year, but it has such an impact on your morale. As that saying says, one bad fruit spoils the cart. You do not want to hire the wrong people. And we want to, in this podcast, talk a bit about what are some of the things that you can do that are really, really practical. I wanted to share with you a parable that I share in this particular book. And it's from the Greek mythology, um, and it's called Her um, Heracles and Hydra. And um, Hydra is a multi-headed serpent that lives in the swamps. And one of Heracles' tasks that's given to him by a king is to slay Hydra. Now, Hydra is this monstrous creature with multiple heads. And one of the things that happens is as soon as you cut the head in one place, two more would grow. And so here's Heracles trying to be able to do that, and he can't because anytime he, he puts all that effort and energy into cutting the head, it grows back quickly. So he says, okay, I need to come up with a bit better strategy here in terms of what they do. So one of the things that they do is that they... Um, uh, he pairs up with another warrior and one of the things that they decide to do is one would hold um, the head and cuts the stump off before the head could grow and the other one would do the cutting. So they basically work together to prevent Hydra from regenerating more heads. Now, the parable of this really important lesson is that there are people that when they start to be the wrong people and start to really impact your culture or the bad fruit that I was speaking about, they can, their one head can grow into two, three, four. So they start to get into other people's heads who are high performing, who are high productive in your teams. So one of the things we need to do is get onto this fast. But the, one of the best ways to avoid it is to make sure that the people that you're hiring are the right fit. There's a couple of great examples or so many great examples of companies. Patagonia is um, a brand that I really love. It's an outdoor clothing company. But it's also renowned for pe hiring people, not that are just skilled in that particular area, but that are really passionate about environmental and social responsibility, which are the two areas and values that it stands for. And so they test for that in the um, interviews that they have. Lush is a cosmetics brand known for hiring people who are really passionate about natural and ethical products because they use a lot of that. So one of the things that they want to do is you want to get people that are in alignment with who you are 
in so that you can, when they're serving your people, when they're serving your clients, that there is an alignment with that. And so Kate uh, Save, who is from Beefit Food, um, is one of the people that I interviewed for this particular book. And one of the things she said is she they really want to know the person as humans, not just a workplace. So a lot of the interviewing questions are really about finding out more and more and more. Kate Winter, who is from Champion Web, who I also interviewed for this book, talked about the fact that um, she's looking for examples around their proactiveness and their commitment when they're having that interview and that, um, and that question as well. So here are some actions that you as a business leader and owner can take around hiring. The first lesson, and this was embarrassing to write about and it's embarrassing to speak about on the podcast, is you want to hire less people like you. I often felt, and there's a lot of research that's been done there, that we are often attracted to the same personalities. And so I made that mistake both in the corporate world but also in my own business where I remember having second and third opinions around that panel and I said, oh, my God, this person was amazing. And I remember my panel, my HR manager in the corporate world saying, I don't think they are a really good fit for what you're trying to do here, Shivani. And I just completely ignored that particular guidance. I was like, thanks very much. At least they had a pulse. At least they were so interesting to be able to speak to. And so one of the things that I did was went against the guidance that I was getting, made my decision, and guess what? Within three to six months, often just as they pass probation, huge issue. So I've made that mistake so many times. I can be a slow learner at times. But sometimes what I've done is I've actually hired people that have got similar styles to me. Now, that might be great in certain roles, but other roles it's important to find people that are the right fit for that particular job, not whether I thought they were the most charismatic or, you know, whatever. And as I'm recording this podcast, I have Leslie, who does all of my podcasts, who is sitting here and listening to me go on and on about this particular podcast. She's like the opposite personality to me, right? I'm out loud and uh, vivacious. She's like gets all that stuff done in the background that I don't have the patience to be able to do. So if I'd hired another person uh, to do this particular podcast, guess what? You probably never would be listening to this particular podcast. So it's so important to be able to um, get the right people and you don't want to just hire people because their styles match yours. You want to make sure that their experience matches the roles that you're trying to get to. The second thing that I want to talk about is how do we choose passionate people? Well, one of the things what we know about the opposite of dispassionate people, we know are the ones that are disengaged. Now, Gallup studies um, over the years have revealed to us that that percentage is really high. In fact, you know, over three quarters of the people in businesses are not passionate about what they do. So how do we find the more passionate people in there? And when we have passionate people, what a big difference it will um, it will create. I know that the Gallup studies done in the US talked about the fact that only just on 30% of workers in the US um, were passionate at the time. So that is huge. That is only, you know, 18% of people that... Um, that we've got to play with and make sure that we've got that. And there's a lot of reasons for that disengagement. You know, sometimes as leader, business leaders and owners, we forget and our managers forget to recognise the people. We need to also really understand that if you've got another layer between yourself and some of your people, um, the number one reason that people leave their jobs is not because of money. The number one reason is because of um, the direct relationship with their manager. And so why do we need passionate people? Like we, It sounds like this thing, and I know that it sounds like on the surface, but there's a lot of benefits in terms of being able to have that. They're definitely more productive. And because they're more motivated and more productive, they produce more work, which actually impacts your profit. So you want to be able to have people that are highly productive, high performing, make you more money. We also find, and a lot of the experience and research shows that people that are really passionate um, those people, because they really care and they're really into their work, they will often find innovative solutions. So they will find things that other people that are not that passionate would not be able to find. Passionate people also are able to collaborate a lot more openly and share their ideas with people because they don't have as much ego and they want to go that extra mile to be able to make that difference. They're really good for your brand. They're really good for your bottom line and they're really good for the people that are working in there as well. And one of the other things that they do really well is this thing, what we call the growth, growth mindset. I'm talking about this 
I've talked about this in other podcasts and I'll continue to talk about this as well. But Carol Dweck was the person that coined that and really her whole um, uh, premise in terms of having the idea that that um, some of your um, ways can be developed, the way that you think can be developed, your skills can be developed when you have a great open mindset and a growth mindset. And so she wrote this book called Mindset, The New Psychology of Success, outstanding book, would so highly recommend it. And she talks about that the growth mindset and the fixed mindset are the two different ways of thinking. When somebody's got a growth mindset, which is somebody that I believe is somebody who's really passionate, they just develop abilities. They work through the hard stuff. They've got the resilience. They even see failures as not as a setback, as something to grow through. Whereas the others are the opposite. And they're the ones that we don't want a lot. And, um, you know, when we don't hire passionate people, there's a lot of additional cost. Obviously, um, you know, how much money do you pay when you've hired the wrong person? I know for me, it was in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, you know, what's the severance pay that you pay to, to get them out of your business, the replacement salary to get them even the new person trained up? What are your training costs to be able to get that person to that level? What are your turnover costs? And these costs even become greater when you lose passionate people. So in this particular podcast, I also want to start to talk a little bit about getting the right people in, but you also want to then be able to learn that. Um, the key thing that I talk about in this, in my book, Getting Your People to Step Up is, um, and in this particular chapter too, is I talk about how to hire passionate people. So one of the things that I've done is I've developed a passion model, which really looks at the seven different areas. And I believe in order to get people that have mastery, must people that really focus on mastery in their life are the ones that focus on three areas of passion. So they do all of them, but three of them they absolutely master. So one of the things we want to do is we want to hire and retain really great A players. B players are okay, but they um, lack often the drive. And the C players are the ones we just want to get out of our business. So one of the things we're looking for through this particular model that I share is that one of the things we want to do is in our interview process is share this particular methodology and um, get people to rate what their top passions are so that we can actually see where work fits in. And one of the things we say, and I've said in um, dozens of interviews, is look, I do not expect work to be your number one passion. So I just want you to really rate it from one to seven in the seven areas. Where do you spend your most time and energy? And one of the things what we're trying to do out of there is see if it fits into the top three. The really honest people will say, look, work's not my number one. Um, it's my number two. My number one is my family or my health or whatever. And then what you want to do is you go, great, tell me about that. Tell me more of that. Because one thing you're doing is looking for honesty and where people's passions fit. Secondly, I'm also looking for examples of how I can incentivize these people. Because if I know how what their passions are, for example, I had a one woman in my business who whose number one passion at the interview she identified was health. So running a business um, where I was the business owner in this particular scenario, I was able to pay for her membership uh, to the gym each year, which was over $1,500. And that was a great way of incentivizing her because she went, wow, that's like $1,500 net that I would have to pay. I'd have to have to earn a lot more than that, then pay tax. So this is such a great incentive. And it wasn't the only reason, but that was one of the really key reasons that she ended up staying there for a long time. We also, even when we're advertising, you want to have make sure that you've got passion-led, you know, position descriptions. Let them look for examples. Let's ask the questions like, what inspired you to, you know, pursue a career in this? Can you share an achievement or a project where you were very passionate about and tell us how that ended up? You know, what gets you excited about work when you wake up first thing in the morning? You know, et cetera. So we want to kind of really in that do our best to be able to find the A players and uh, I always say to people, please, please, please make sure if they haven't given you referees, ask for referees. If they've given you referees, yes, they don't give any final referees that they're um, going to give them bad things, but ring them, ask them about their role, ask them about how passionate they were and how that actually works as well. Um, and one of the things you want to do is perhaps use the passion model that I share with you in the book um, is, uh, you know, how do we actually understand what the different people's passions are? Where might they be sitting? How can we utilize them a little bit better? And again, if passion is not there, then, you know, that's okay. We just know that if they've rated work at six or seven, 
they're probably not going to be an ideal passionate person in terms of what they actually do as well. So I hope that that really helps. It's given you some ideas in terms of how to recruit people, how to incentivize them. But trust me, do the numbers of when you've actually hired people that were not very passionate. Look at how much it costs you. It probably costs you so much money. And um, you want to be able to learn from that example and be able to make those decisions very, very differently going into the future. I just appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in. I hope that you have an opportunity to read the book, which has obviously got a lot more information and uh, questions in there. I share with them in there how I've come up with my top three, what my vision board is and how I create the vision board. Um, and I also ask you questions like, um, you know, have you worked out how much the mishires have cost you in the last 12 months? Now I want you to multiply that over the now last few years. Look at that cost, start to build in some of the different things. Also help you how to work out, you know, create different vision boards. And you want to make sure that there is, if there's some specific skills that are lacking in your team, how do we actually build that into there? And how do we actually keep the right people? So what motivates people? How do we keep them in? How do we use the passion model to incentivize people rather than just give them blanket dollars or blanket vouchers or blanket, you know, um, ham or whatever it is that you give as incentives? Like you want to be able to really ta tailor that and target people based on what they're really into. I appreciate you tuning in. Thanks so much. Any questions you have, please remember to ask me on askjavani.com. I'm Shivani Gupta and you've been listening to the Grow Your Business podcast. I hope you got one idea that you can think about or perhaps even implement straight away in your business. Thank you for listening. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn under Ask Shivani. Remember I call it Ask Shivani, so please send me your questions that I can address in this podcast for you. And I would also so appreciate if you went to the Apple podcast to rate and review this podcast.